What's up guys? Welcome back to another Commander Deck Tech. This one is everybody's favorite purple hippo, the Feldergriff. This is a stack screw pugs deck. What does that mean? That means we put up a bunch of Pelo Fort stuff that makes our opponents pay to attack us. And then just give everybody free stuff. Free mana, free card draw, extra lands, free hippos, whatever. Just, just don't attack us. <laughs> All right, so this deck is probably going to go really, really quickly. But let's jump into it, starting off with the creatures. Uh, Sunscape Familiar, green spells and blue spells you play cost one less to cast. Land of War Elves. Evra Has Halcyon Witness, pay four life exchange your life total with this card's power. And then it has lifelink, so you'll gain it back plus four life every time. Weaver of Currents, Salvala, uh, Explorer Returned, has Parlay, tap, each player reveals the top card of his or her library for each non land card revealed this way. Add a green mana and gain one life, then each player draws a card. Oromancer, return target. Enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand, because we are running quite a few enchantments. Mesa Enchantress, draw a card whenever you cast an enchantment. Archon of Absolution, protection from white, and creatures can't attack you or planeswalking control unless they pay one for each of those creatures. So this is just the first of the Pillow Fort stuff. Tempting Worm, probably the funniest card in the deck. Uh, it's a two drop, five five. When it comes into play, each opponent may put any number of artifacts, creatures, enchantments, or lands from his or her hand into play. So it's amazing. People see this, and then sometimes they want to just dump everything, but then there's times they're too scared because they don't know if anyone else has a board wipe. Howling Golem, when it attacks or blocks, each player draws a card because we're all about everybody getting stuff. Uh, Edric Spymaster, whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, its controller may draw a card, because we want people to get free stuff. Kami of False Hope. Sack it, prevent all damage that we build, dealt this turn. Steward of Archive, creatures you control, or creatures can't attack you or planeswalkers you control unless that controller plays one for each of those creatures, so another Pelifort type card. The... <laughs> Meddler here, tap, each player draws a card, then each player who draw a card this way gains one life. Each player may draw a card, so they don't have to draw a card, but they may draw a card. Veteran Explorer, when it dies, each player may search their card for up to two basic lands, put them into the battlefield, and then each player who searched their library shuffles it. The Feldergriff is our commander here, but here is his cousin that went questing, the questing Feldergriff. It's... Another commander option for the deck. I personally prefer the original Feldegriff, but that is just me. Call me of the Crescent Moon. Each player during their draw step draws an additional card. Suture Priest. Whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. And whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your opponent's control, uh, that player loses one life. Which goes great with your commander because you can pay one green and until end of turn, this card gets trampled. Put a hippo token in play under your opponent, treat it as a 1 1 green creature token. So you can just throw your green mana at your opponent with Suture Priest on the board, and they'll lose one life for each hippo you give them. I didn't say it was all good stack stuff or group hug stuff. Sarah Avatar, uh, this creature's power and toughness is equal to your life total, and when it's put in the graveyard from anywhere, shuffle it into its owner's library. And then the last creature in the deck is Kior's Follower, because there are some permanents that you want to untap, so having this is nice. That is the creatures. Artifacts in the deck, we're running all the great ones. School Caller's Bell, each player puts the top card of his or her library into the graveyard. Horn of Greed, whenever a player plays a land, that player draws a card. Celestia Signet, Temple Bell, each player draws a card when it taps. God Pharaoh Statue, uh, spells your opponent's cast cost two more to cast, and at the beginning of each of your end step, each opponent loses one life. Azorius Signet, because we gotta get our colors. Howling Mine, each player draws an additional card. As long as Howling Mine is untapped, that player draws a card, and it's almost always gonna be untapped. 
Simic Signet, because you need to get your colors. Chroma Spell, all swamps become 1-1 one, one creatures. They are still swamps and count as lands and cannot be tapped for mana the turn they come out. So this A slows down anybody playing basic swamps or anybody running, uh, what is it? Or, uh, yeah, can't think of the name of that land right now. The one that turns all of the lands into swamps. This just slows all the swamp players down. It slips my mind right now. I don't know what the hell. Uh, authority of the consoles. Creatures your opponent control enter the battlefield. Tap whenever a creature enters the battlefield under opponent's control. You gain life. So it slows your opponents down and we gain some life. Holding of seeing wins at the beginning of your upkeep. Draw a card for each shrine you control because we can't just give all our opponents all the draw. We got to get some ourselves. Quarantine field to get rid of the problems. Smothering tithe because with the right set of combos, our opponents will be drawing an extra three to four cards per turn. Okay, with the right enchantments on the board. And not because they want to, because our enchantments make them. So then Smothering Tide, they're not going to pay two for each of those cards. You're going to build so many treasures to give them hippos with your commander. So keep that in mind. Uh, right to Flourishing, at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card, and each player may play an additional land on their turn. So not only are we letting them draw an extra card, we're giving them more mana, okay? Just more mana. Here you go. Play another land. Um, Eldamri's Vineyard. The beginning of each player's main phase. Add two green mana, um, green mana to that player's mana pool. Another great card. Dictator Crufix. Beginning of each player's draw step. That player draws an additional card. So if you're not keeping track, that means we're giving them extra mana. And we're drawing them a bunch of cards. And Smothering Tide is amazing in this deck because of all these enchantments. Dictator Care Metro, whenever an opponent taps a land, that land adds one mana to his or her mana pool. In addition um, to the ones that it produces. Next enchantment is Mind Unbound. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a lore counter on Mind Unbound. And then draw a card for each lore counter on it. Sigil of the Empty Throne. The best enchantment in this deck. We are playing so... So many enchantment cards in here and what's wrong with 4-4 angels? Nothing. So we'll just get a bunch of 4-4 angels. Now, we're giving all our opponents all this stuff, right? That doesn't seem fair that we're just giving them all this stuff, right? So here we go. We have Spear of Safety. Creatures can't attack you or planeswalkers you control unless their controller plays X, where X is the number of enchantments you control. And if you haven't been counting, we, sir, have a lot of enchantments. That's an artifact. Hang on. We have here five, ten, 11 enchantments so far and then we have propaganda they have to pay two per creature to attack you ghostly prison they have to pay two per creature to attack you reverence creatures with power two or less can't attack you so they can think about it all they want they got to send them somewhere else so that's 14 enchantments i believe it was and then we have Rule of Law, Deafening Silence, and Arcane Laboratory. Now, by the time we get these out, our board's already set up. Now it's just about slowing down our opponents. And slowing them down, this will do. Because we don't want them to build too much of a board where they can kill us. We want them to just kill each other. So, we just... Give them all the free stuff, extra card draws, extra lands, extra mana, and then we just put up a wall and say, hey, look, attack wherever you want, just not here. Okay, next off we have the instance. We have moment of silence. Target player skips his or her combat phase. 
this turn because just in case they we give them stuff and they try to kill us mercy killing target player uh target creatures controller sacrifices it and then puts x one one green and white elf warrior creature tokens in the play where x is that creature's power this gets rid of problem cards and one ones aren't as much of an issue bant charm nature's claim dramatic rescue fact or fiction because we got to get to our enchantments quicker uh disdainful stroke because counter spells are good keep watch draw a card for each attacking creature another great way to draw some cards domineering wheel target creature gains control of up to three target non-attacking creatures until end of turn untap those creatures they block this turn if able in case we need some blockers reigns of power you and target opponent each untap and gain control of all creatures the other controls. Until end of turn, those creatures are unaffected by summoning sickness. Now, my favorite play with this is when an opponent goes off. When they build their best board and then kill somebody else. Because you're giving all the free stuff. They're not going to kill you first. Okay? And then it gets to your turn. You cast Reigns of Power. And you take all the stuff they just killed that other play with and kill them with it. Root Snare is the last uh, instant in the deck. I'm not running Fog. Uh, I didn't have one to put in this deck. But Root Snare will do just fine. Sorceries in the deck. We have Farseek, Commune with Nature, Sirtuitous Root, Tempt with Discovery. A lot of times people will take the temptation and search for some lands and then you get to put some lands for each of the ones found kodama's reach because we got to make sure we get to our lands and then collective voyage starting with you each player may pay any amount of mana and then each player searches for x where x is the amount of mana paid into this this can get really really big really really quickly depending how willing your play group is or your pod is of players. So sometimes this will give us the victory. All right. So that is this deck tech, guys. Like always, the deck list is in the top of the description box for you guys to go check out. I do not cover the lands in my deck techs. I just leave them in the link so you can check out the deck list and see them all there. If you like these deck techs, give the video thumbs, thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And let me know down below if there's any cards you suggest I run in this deck or any cards that you didn't know you could run in this deck that maybe I'm running that you don't run or do you guys not like group hug? Let me know down below. It's always fun to hear you guys' comments. And I will see you guys in the next video.